This is a battle in the Unit Ban tournament. Uh, I believe it was hosted by Blade Master, and uh, from memory, I, I might mess this up because I don't remember uh, which units were banned and which weren't. But I do believe Hippias and Thorax were banned for Massilia, and I don't remember what was banned from Rome. Uh, pff, let's see. I don't see any Evocati. Uh, so maybe Evocati and uh, have a wild guess Evocati and Praetorians. But let's see what let's see what the Massilia brought first here, and and just a few words of, I mean, if you've watched any competitive Rome two, you know that Rome is considered a very safe faction because of their high armor, high attack, infantry. Uh, what that means is that Rome isn't as reliant on getting charges off as the barbarian factions rome is more reliant on stopping charges and as as the battle goes on and starts to blob up rome has significant capabilities in just grinding out melees now massilia is in a bit of a unique position in that they have barbarian low tiers and then they have hellenic mid tiers so and also they have some sort of sort of uh, mid low tier units like the axe warriors and they are to be fair pretty decent units for their price but no match for roman infantry so massilia also has some some uh, Masi some massilian cavalry and i can see only see citizen cavalry here so maybe massilian cavalry was banned not really sure so let's go over the army we have flanks of three axe warriors on each flank then we have a center of, let's see, five Massilian Hoplites, Massilian Hoplite General. A uh, cool thing about Massilian Hoplites is that they have 10 armor penetration on their spears. And that, together with the bonus against infantry they get in Phalanx, uh, means that they can do considerable damage, will still lose to similarly priced sword units. Then we have four Celtic Slingers, we have a Tarantine Cavalry, two Shittison, and two Tarantine in total. For Rome, we have one, two, three, let's see, uh, four veteran legionaries, two legionary cohorts, uh, two more legionary cohorts, Vigilis up front, auxiliary Balearic slingers, uh, two legionary cavalry, Vigilis, one Sociae Equite, Sociae Equite, uh, Vigilis, and for the general, we have general and bodyguard commander. So for Massilia, the main issue is of course grinding down the grinding down the Roman cav the Roman infantry, and the way that Rome has deployed here, Rome is in a fairly defensive defensive position. This is not a formation you use if you want to rush and engage. However, what Rome could do and should do is to use the auxiliary Balearic slingers to target down targets of importance. Now this setup here by by Massilia is a bit risky because the Axe Warriors cannot take cavalry charges very well. They only have a Shittison cavalry to protect them. So a few cavalry charges along the flanks here, chase away the, uh, the Tarantine cavalry and then go for charges and the flanks of Massilia are essentially gone. There is nothing defending these Axe Warriors from getting, let's say, Sushi Equite Extraordinary in the face. And um, if Massilia loses its cavalry support in, in this engagement, I mean, they only have, they have six Axe Warriors and then they have the Massilian Hoplites. The Massilian Hoplites will die to the infantry of Rome, while the Axe Warriors will die to everything else. So keeping the very, very light cavalry support for Massilia, I think that's very important. And bringing two Tarantines when you have, I mean, as Massilia, everything needs to work optimally because nothing you have is significantly better than what your enemy can bring. Let's see here, the Auxiliary Balearic Slingers not firing yet. Uh, these Slingers, it seems like they want to start firing on some Axe Warriors or some Shittison Cavalry or something. Pulling back the infantry, starting to engage with Celtic Slingers, and this is a bad engagement for Rome. Rome does absolutely not want to walk into the field of fire of Celtic Slingers, getting chased away by cavalry, and then and then taking casualties unnecessarily. Uh, when you have a cavalry, cavalry advantage, this is not the type of skirmishing that you want to do. 
now these legionary cavalry units are are taking hits as well so already good opening moves by Massilia getting some damage done to Roman and this of course is just if this citizen cavalry manages to hit the auxiliary Belarus slingers ooh, it's no it has to it has to turn away and it manages to do that fairly well but once again I don't see why this socia equite isn't out wrecking things it can kill so many axe warriors on the charge. Now the uh, auxiliary Belarics lost 18 men and they have caused one, they have, they have inflicted one casualty. So already by mismanaging of skirmishers, uh, Massilia is starting to get a small edge against Rome. Because these, uh, a significant amount of funds was invested in these uh, Belarics. And not, not getting your money's worth out of, of three expensive elite slinger units. That's that's a problem. That's a huge problem. Axe Warriors dropping to missile fire. Over here we have Sushi Aikutes. Uh, they could just charge into the axes here. Yep. And you'll see what heavy cavalry does now to Axe Warriors on the charge. It's not, it's not as bad as it could have been. But that hit point damage... Understood. Over here we have Massilian Hopetes rushing in and uh, this is a horrible, once again, horrible engagement for Rome. We have legionary cavalry and then Massilia just piling in the units, piling in axe warriors, piling in Massilian Hopetes and, and these two units together are pretty decent. The Massilian Hopetes tank and the axe warriors inflict damage, but Massilian Hopetes are not just for holding because of their 30 damage spear and 10 AP. They, they can do some damage as well. So in this engagement, Rome is just losing Sushi Aikotes. Veteran Legionaries are going to kill these Axe Warriors. But Axe Warriors coming into support, and, and that's the role that they really excel in when they're able to get in. Uh, when they're able to get in at advantageous angles. Because of their their high um, high AP. Oh here the legionary cohort chasing away a few units. The legionary cavalry gone. Vigiles go into square, they'll be able to hold uh, the Axe Warriors for some time at least. But here you can see that the Messilian Hopetes up against Veteran Legionaries not really going to happen. And I believe we have formation attack being used here because they bunched up like that. And, and that you cannot go, you cannot use formation attack together with, uh, with Phalanx when you're fighting like this. Because uh, when, when you go into formation attack, your formation is going to contract and then you're going to get surrounded like this. So what you want to do is you want to take off formation attack and then you want to charge in and then hit phalanx. It's, it's completely useless using formation attack with, with phalanx. And what can also happen is that the unit starts bugging out like here. But this looks like, here it looks like either the, uh, the it looks like the unit wasn't in formation attack here. But these Roman units are definitely in formation attack, so it's it's not as bad as it would be otherwise. But when you have formation attack on on multiple units, you will start to get really weird engagement angles. Like these Roman units, instead of wrapping around this blob here, they're standing and holding the line like this. Which, I mean... It isn't disastrous at this point, but but they they could have wrapped around and gotten into the Massilian Hoplites here uh, a lot a lot earlier than they did. I haven't really been paying attention over here, but uh, Axe Warriors get getting chased off the field, not managing to do much. The Axe Warriors die here as well. Axe Warriors are a unit that needs significant babysitting in order to in order to perform well. Uh, you can't just, I mean, if you if you frontally cavalry charge and then send in an Axe Warrior, it can work. If you hold a unit and then attack it in the rear with an Axe Warrior, that can work. But Axe Warriors are not for frontally assaulting things. In that role, they will die to just about everything. Uh, let's see what we have left here. The Romans have some units here. This Massil and Hoplites are losing against the Legionary Cohort. But there isn't, I mean, we have some Celtic Slingers left for Massilia. Um, the Tarentines are still alive. The Roman the Roman uh, cavalry was basically wasted. And here we have 
the general's bodyguard fighting up against the Shittison cavalry and the Tarantine. I don't understand what this Oshia Equite is doing. Getting attacked in the rear by Tarantine cavalry. But everywhere else, the Axe Warriors getting some decent kills here. They just cannot engage uh, veteran legionaries frontally. Massilian general is doing fine, but he's about to get surrounded by veteran legionaries, and, and that's that's a meat grinder he doesn't want to be in. Uh, if if they do engage, oh, uh, this looks like might be formation attack shenanigans here. Yeah, this is this is how I mean. Once formation attack starts getting into the mix, weird, weird things happen. The Massilian Hoplite General is, is holding out. And saving the Massilian Hoplites for late game grinding. I think I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it it's uh, it's a smart move. Because in order for them to to deal with the legionaries the legionaries need to have taken a significant amount of prior damage. These, these Valerics are not playing for themselves. Now the Massilian Hoplites are surrounded to a significant degree here. The uh, Susha Equites, they haven't really made their presence felt in this battle. Now they're going to take uh, care of a unit of Shittis and Cavalry. Massilian Hoplites in Phalanx over here. Veteran legionaries charging into the flanks while the Hopites are celebrating. And somehow the Massilian Hopite general stabilized. He is getting kills here. But the, the Roman, the Sushi Equites, get into the Celtic Slingers here. Uh, the, it looks like the Tarantines are going to be able to get into the Auxiliary Balearics here. Sushi, I crash into this unit. Bam. And now the Sushi is starting to really starting to pay for itself. And this Tarantine is also doing a decent job. Massilian Hopete is now winning slightly against the veteran legionaries. Uh, the veteran legionaries are they are wrapping around a bit. Celtic Slingers being chased away here. But now the Massilian Hoplites engage. They manage to get into the Vigiles and charge the Veteran Legionaries head on. Charge bonus of 26 isn't bad. And if you charge in like this and hit Phalanx immediately, that is a decent way of taking care of a unit of Veteran Legionaries that is at half strength. <laughs> oh, nice rare charge here from the Sushia Equites. The Syrian Hopetes took that charge fairly well, I'd say. Started losing decisively now, and, and a few more cycles of this from the Sushi and, and those uh, Masilian Hopetes are gone. Celtic Slingers are firing on the Sushi so good job. Let's see if they can connect one more time here. Yeah, they just managed to connect one more time, and that charge did a lot of damage. Losing decisively, and if the Celtic Slingers continue to fire here, they're going to be hitting these Massilian Hopetes in the back. Massilian Hopetes are wavering. Wavering. But Rome doesn't have much left either. Uh, they do have this Veteran Legionary with 180 kills. They do have this Vigile chasing after the... Enemy, this uh, legionary cohort is actually losing now because it's yeah it's it's a fairly depleted unit and uh, the the morale of legionary cohorts are not not nearly as good as the as the um, veteran legionaries and the Avocati. Still a decent unit, but if you have an entire line of legionary cohorts, you're usually going to have a bad time as Rome.
This is very close. These Massilian Hoplites could charge in here and do a decent job. Because this unit is going to win, and when that unit comes in to support here, that's going to be very good. But this I don't agree with. They really need to turn around and charge here. Uh, can't afford to lose a single man unnecessarily. There they, t they, they do it, they turn around, they get the charge. Let's see here, the combat is even. The veteran legionaries are dropping fast, they're actually dropping faster than the Messina and Hoplites because of prior damage. Now the Hoplites are going into Phalanx, it's going to mean that it's even easier for them to take out the veteran legionaries. They are exhausted, they are losing. While the Massilia Hoplites are only gen only only um, the Massilian Hoplites are only active. And that is very, very important in allowing these Massilian Hoplites to defeat the veteran legionaries. Managing fatigue, so so important. Now we should see Roman units start to just break immediately on contact. These Massilian Hoplites charging into the legionary cohort. The legionary cohort should almost die instantly from this charge. A phalanx is being hit and then the legionary cohort is just going to start dropping immediately. So a nice use of charge and hoplite phalanx in this battle by Massilia. And who would have thought Massilia able to defeat Rome? It comes down to, I mean, if, if you if you start messing with the rules of the game, so if you start uh, limiting melee infantry, of course that's going to, to, um, that's going to hit Rome harder than a faction like Massilia, because, very nicely done there by DWG Jizz, very close, very close battle. Uh, this, these opening moves, limiting the kills of the Auxiliary Balearic Slingers, very nice. I mean, we have Celtic Slingers doing the same amount of damage as Auxiliary Balearics here. And in the late game, this Sociae started paying for itself, but the Roman Cavalry was mismanaged. And uh, let's see, Veteran Legionaries do a decent job, but Legionary Cohorts, that's um, a bit of a strange choice. Now, the thing is with... When once melee units are limited to eight, then Massilia can start to hang with Rome. Now they shouldn't be able to in most cases, but when Massilia and Hoplites are used as well as these two, these two units are sort of s show standard performance against sword units. The veteran legionaries charge in, they wreck the Massilia and Hoplites, but later on in the late game, when these units are exhausted, if some units are kept in reserve, the Massilia and Hoplites can do a lot of damage and if you look at the if you look at the melee units the the infantry units for Roma and Massilia here the in a head-on engagement if you match up unit for unit these Massilia and Hoplites should be able to hold while the axe warriors should be able to flank around and do a lot of damage that way so it comes down to in in this particular battle boom bringing a few useless units these vigilates are could be used against uh, could be used against um, barbarian factions, but the cool thing about Massilia when you limit the amount of melee units that can be brought is that they have hoplites that can sort of double up as a spear infantry and as decent enough melee infantry, because s sort of the same reason as the thorax hoplites they have a thirty a thirty damage ten AP spear when they go into phalanx they essentially get fifteen AP versus infantry and thirty five damage so it puts them much closer to sword infantry with higher AP so thorax hoplites are better in many engagements than say thorax swords so enough blabbering thanks to blade master for sending me this battle it was a very interesting one good job to uh, DDG's strength and honor.